Hello YouTube, uh, ProAcid here and today I'm back with another video on uh, helping you how to create a Minecraft server uh, because yesterday I uploaded this video and uh, many people were asking on how to make a server as well because uh, the proxy is for your client on to get on Minecraft but uh, also they want to know how to host the server so to start off there's many different ways to host your server and I want to be clear that you might find problems along the way and it's not always my fault on my part because I didn't explain it right maybe it's something with your computer because not every computer is the same and uh, sometimes you might have issues like yes there are many people um, that couldn't fix the problem with the proxy the proxy the proxy's issue on the proxy side it's just to delete those two files but for um, for the computer you might have something different that it doesn't want to run the proxy itself and that's not the proxy's fault or the video's fault because uh, on my part I did explain on how to fix it but anyways that's not the point of this video so first of all uh, we will start by getting uh, some things ready and knowing what you need for your computer to start a server so first of all I always recommend um, checking what kind of system OS you have if you have 64-bit or 32-bit the easiest way is to go to start computer and then um, if you are in Windows 7 just hit system properties up there and it will show you uh, the things but if you're not on uh, if you're not on Windows 7 you can easily go into your your hard drive your main hard drive and then you see if you have a second programs files with an x86 if you have that then that means you're on a 64-bit machine but if you only have one that says program files then you're on a 32 on a 32 bit machine and I'll also show you how the system properties looks like as you see right here it says system type 64 bit operating system and um, that's what I need to know for myself and you need to find that for yourself secondly we will go to bucket and actually get their latest build and as of right now it's 3. Point, uh, no no 1.3.1 and I'm going to hit the big green button and he was going to ask me to save it I'm sorry for the noise there's cars and motorcycles going outside once the download is done you can drag it into your desktop and uh, from now on I recommend creating a folder so I'm going to name this Minecraft test server and I'm going to drag my craft bucket in there because uh, right now we're gonna run a server that you can install uh, you can install plugins and stuff like that because the main minecraft server all you do is download it from uh, main minecraft.net but you will not be able to uh, add plugins in the future and stuff like that you will only be able to run a vanilla server with the no plugins and if you want to run a server that other people will join you will need to have plugins so you can create some sort of protection so your your stuff doesn't get uh, griefed anyways that's not the point right now so after you have your craft bucket in here you will need to look down in the description of this video and get a code that I'll post there and the code will be something like this um, remember now if you have a 32-bit uh, system the, your code will not have this x86 here because there's no point for it to have that since there's no folder that exists on your computer on a 32-bit computer with that name so your code will be the same but it will not have that part because as I said it doesn't exist but if you're running on a 64-bit machine like I am you will have this part because Java is using a 32-bit um, system so you will copy this from down in the description and you will come in this folder and you will create a new text document you can name it anything you're not gonna need it so you don't even have to name it anything and you're going to paste that code in here and now I'm going to explain what parts you need to change from this code if you need to change something in the future when a new build comes out you will need to change stuff from here so first of all here it says how much RAM your server will use and that also depends on how much RAM you have because you cannot give more than what you have and uh, to see what how much you have you can go back to your system properties and I have 8 gigs uh, that's pretty decent and uh, I can if you want to run 
uh, a small server with like 10 to 15 slots. Uh, 512 megs or 1 gig will do just fine. If you want to run um, maybe a 40 slot server, you might want to go with a 3 to 4 gigs. So I'm going to I'm going to leave it at 1 gig. That's 100 uh, 1024 megabytes. That's how much is going to start and that's the maximum it can use. So actually or actually, let's just leave it at that. And then right after that it says a jar, which means what is going to use what Java is going to use to run. And now uh, here, oh my god, this thing. <laughs> okay, there that's a lot better. Here it says the the craft bucket but it says the old one that I used to have but now the new one has a different name so I'm going to just copy this name I'm just gonna copy it and I'm going to paste it right after where it's a jar make sure there's a space and then you paste it in here and very important make sure that you don't delete the dot jar at the, at the end because that's what is going to recognize as a jar file because your computer is not going to see just the name, but it's going to see also what type of file it is, and in this case it's a dot .jar. Uh, and um, you go, after that, you just go to File, Save As, and then here you want to name it uh, maybe Start Server dot B-A-T. That's very important that you put that B-A-T at the end because that's what is going to make this file an executable so you just save that and uh, it just it's right there now you can delete this now since it's empty and there's no need for that anymore but make sure you keep the code somewhere safe uh, that you can find it in the future in case you wanna change stuff around so now for the server to start all I have to do is click on start server and it's going to do stuff like that and it's going to start the server now I have a couple of things here that you there's different scenarios which might happen for you. One of them might be could not bind to port. If that happens, you will still need to create some files like this. And to create these files, you have to just double click on the jar and I'll show you that right now. So my server is actually running because I've already port forwarded and everything because um, I run a test server on my computer to, to test plugins before I upload them to my main dedicated server. So I'm just going to delete them for now and show you how it would be for you if it didn't start when you run the start. When, it's, when you run it, if, it run, uh, if this one it says that your um, Minecraft could not bind to port 25565 then that's an issue and you'll need to fix it but um, if it doesn't say that and your files start fine then you don't have to worry this is usually for people that have a router if you don't have a router then you most likely have nothing to worry about but if you do have a router and your when you start this file it doesn't start your server you want to double click on this on this uh, craft bucket here and it will create all these files that you need all by itself because we need these files in order to edit stuff and make it work uh, and as you saw, it just created everything that this file started before, but this one actually started a server, but this one didn't. All it did is create the files. So now, uh, we will need to see what your um, your port forwarding, we, no, we will need to start port forwarding. And to do that, you will need to get onto your router, and all, usually all it takes is probably mine, I have um, Netgear, and all I do is log in, no, router, login.net and it will take you to your IP but if that doesn't work you might want to go to CMD your command command prompt and type ipconfig oops ah there's no there's no spaces it's just one word and uh, you want to scroll up and that's my IP right there my IPv4 address and that's what I will need for the future also so keeping that in mind you can just go do that on your browser and it will take you to your router's login page and uh, if you never set up a login it's probably admin and password your username is admin and your password is the word password but if you have set up a password before then that's different also your router um, when you first bought it it probably says it somewhere that your login info so you might want to look out for that so here for my Netgear you probably if you updated the interface here 
it's, it looks a little different but it's still the same thing as the old one the old one used to have so many things on the side here but it doesn't anymore so let's go fast let's click oh good what did I do <laughs> okay let's click on advanced mm. okay so after clicking on advanced you might want to go down to advanced setup and then you want to go down to port forwarding and port triggering that's the thing we need right now for minecraft and as you see i already have it in here so but actually i'll just do it again to show you guys so i'm just gonna delete it okay so when you come here you will need to, to make sure that you select port forwarding and then um... you want to add a custom service in here you will name your service uh, i like naming it minecraft since it's easy to understand what it is and uh, select TCP and UDP and then set your first port here to 25565 that's the main Minecraft port and then your second one again to 25565 and uh, down here now uh, if you know I'm sorry if you know that um, if you're using Netgear, it probably shows your devices that are connected right now, and you can choose it down here. And uh, that's my uh, iPad, and that's my computer right now. So, but if you don't know what, uh, if your router doesn't show this information here, you will need to check your in your CMD when we typed IP config. It actually says it IPv4. It's these numbers, and then at the end, it's a dot two, and that's what we need the the last part. So as you see right here, that's the one that this computer has, and we will need to put that at dot two. This is really important, and it will be um, really useful for the future also when we will set up what IP the server will use. So when we do that, we just hit apply. And right now, this um, your router is is told that when it when. Uh, when a program requests to open the, to use the port 25565 on this IP which is this computer because your router as you know it has it's you can connect multiple devices so in many cases it doesn't know which one to allow and uh, so we made it allow this computer which has this this IP which we found in here and uh, to allow the port 25565 in and out external and and start okay so now after we do that part you can uh, either minimize that or stop it. and now we have to go back to the folder and now here is where we have to edit stuff so on your server that properties you'll have to edit it I use uh, notepad plus plus but if you don't have notepad plus plus you can double click on it it will say it doesn't know what to use and then click select the program and go uh, go with all the wordpad or notepad or something similar that you have that you can open it with notepad right there but I'm gonna use notepad plus plus because it's uh, actually one of the best ones you can use for things like this because it's easy and it has everything listed down the correct way and yeah okay so let's start here what is what is, does this uh, config all mean so first of all it says allow nether I'm not gonna go in too much in but I'll actually explain some stuff um, so let's go through this again so your allow nether will allow people to go to the nether or to the end at the same time if this set to true that means that it will allow them to true means yes false means no in simple terms so the second one level uh, name in this case we just gonna name our world world but if you have a world that you have imported from your single player all you do is make sure to toss it in this folder and then you copy that name of the, the so let's say we had a world named let's say this world was ours and it was named epic world <laughs> or something similar similar so if that was in and we copied it from our single player and we put it in here all we do is make sure that this name here matches that name there completely even capitals and everything let's say epic world and uh, now our server will use that world when uh, we start okay uh, the second one there it says enable query that's for other um, 
that's for certain not servers that's for website to track down if your server is up if your how many players it has and stuff like that if you wanted to have it uh, so other server other sites can see if your server is online or not then you might want to enable that allow flight this is if uh, you want to allow flight to work on your server I usually put this to true server port that's 25565 that's important because that's what we put um, on our net on our port forwarding right here we put that port and that's what we want to allow so we want to make sure that it actually says that level type leave it to default enable archon not for you right now nothing too important level seed if you want to have a seed for your world you want to put the seed here server IP this is important you want to make sure that it says your IPv4 address that you put in here and also the one that you put in here this one is easier to copy so I'm just gonna use this and I'm gonna paste it in here now the server that's ran from this computer is going to use that specific IP to make it easier on the router to understand that it comes from that server I mean from this computer so now this server will be bind to this IP which is this computer max build height you might not want to change that spawn NPCs those are the villagers uh, whitelisted that's if you want to have only the people that added on the whitelist here to join the server so if their name is not in this list they will not be able to join um, what else is here spawn animals that's pretty self-explanatory <coughs> I'm sorry snooper enable this is for minecraft.net to allow to get information from your server to help them make future builds better I mean I don't know you can make up your mind and choose one texture pack uh, that's if you want your server to use a texture pack and that's a pretty new uh, option that's been added and it's pretty cool now online mode um, you want to set this to false this is really important and make sure to do this because if you don't if you don't change this that means only if you have bought a minecraft account you will be able to join and you most likely haven't bought one so you want to change this to false that's done <laughs> pvp set to true that means it's going to be allowed difficulty one is for survival the normal one Two, uh, zero is for creative, and one, uh, two is for hardcore. I'm just gonna leave that to one. Oh no, that's how. That's your. If it's peaceful, hard. I mean, easy, hard, and uh, easy, medium, hard, something like that. This is your game mode. If you want to leave it at zero, one, or two, maximum players. You want to leave it at twenty for now, unless you want to change that spawn monsters that means if monsters will be on your world generate structures that's the NPC village the buildings view distance now this one if you have a, if you, your computer isn't good you might want to change this to less something like five so you will have less lag and then this is what is going to say at the bottom of the server I'm just gonna put this as test server and uh, we're pretty much done with here so I'm not gonna change that actually because it's just going to generate one and it's just going to waste our time here. and um, now if we've done everything correctly you will be able to just hit start server and your server should start and as you see right here it actually did start and that's pretty cool and now it's gonna generate the world again because we changed the name <laughs> So we did actually have to wait. Anyway, so now that's it. Now to connect to your server, you want to use your IP address. To find your IP address, you can go on Google and type what's my IP. What's my IP .org does that for you. You copy your IP and you start your Minecraft. That's my Minecraft. I actually have a premium account, but it doesn't matter right now. So, direct connect, and I'm going to connect to that. And I'm going to show you now. It's not going to work for me because my antivirus blocks the server. 
my antivirus does not allow that port to work. My my router is working fine and it's allowing it, but my antivirus is not letting it go. And because many of you have different antiviruses and I'm not going to go and how to fix that now because it's not worth it, it's not gonna help everyone out. But either you if you wanna see if your antivirus is blocking it, turn off your network firewall for a few minutes. I'm just gonna put it for ten minutes for now. And uh, you will you will see if you will be able to connect. If you still can connect after you disabled your antivirus, then you have done something wrong. You haven't done port forwarding right, and you might want to go back and check. So now, bam, it's working fine. Right there, that just shows that my um, my router allow is allowing lag. It's allowing the server to run, and uh, it's all good. Now, other people will be able to join as well and uh, you should have no issues from now on that's it for now guys uh, this has been a long tutorial now I need to go through and edit stuff out if you actually like and now learn something from this tutorial make sure to subscribe and leave a comment below and uh, like this video it does help me out and uh, it doesn't take too long for you to do that and you know it's a win-win situation I hope I helped you out. I'll be doing more tutorials on how to add uh, plugins and also how to make a Mineshaft version of this server so you will not have to have it on uh, faults. You know, with the online mode we set it at faults because we have we don't have a premium account. But with Mineshaft it's going to allow us to set that to true but it's going to use the proxy, the servers of Mineshaft. So that way you will need to you will not need to have a plugin such as X out or out me which will make everyone register every time they log in and that's kind of annoying if you don't want to have that. If you want to stick around and uh, watch the more tutorials in the future, please subscribe and stay tuned. Thanks for watching once again.